This devotional is for Tuesday, May the 2nd, 2023. The title, The Hand of the Lord, was against Israel. Now, our scripture reading today brings us to only one chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 2. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 2 continues the speech that Moses began in chapter 1. And you're going to find it is a recollection of Israel's wanderings in the wilderness. And so as we come to this passage, 38 years have passed since Israel disobeyed the Lord, refused to enter the promised land. But now the Lord is saying in Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 3, you have come past this mountain long enough, turn you northward. Well, as Israel began her march northward to enter into the promised land, which is the land of Canaan, there were nations along the way that Israel was not to disturb. You find those mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter four, verse or chapter two rather, verses four through twenty three. Now why these nations? Why were they to be spared? And the answer is because they all had a kinship with Israel, either with Abraham, with his nephew Lot, or with uh, Isaac, Esau, and Jacob. And so therefore in God's grace, the Lord warns Israel, do not distress your kin. Now, who are these kinship nations? Well, the first is the Edomites. They're mentioned in Deuteronomy 2, verses 4 through 7. Now, they had particularly refused Israel passage through their land. Yet, Israel is cautioned now. They are descendants of Esau, Jacob's brother. Therefore, meddle not with them, chapter 2 and verse 5, for I will not give you of their land. I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. Now, we also read in verse 7 that Israel lacked for nothing. Therefore, they were warned, do not spoil, do not take advantage of Edom. If you need meat, buy meat. If you need water, buy water. And so, they were not to trouble the Edomites. But then, as you look at verses 8 through 12, they were also not to trouble the Moabites. They, too, were of Lot's lineage. Now, coming uh, to Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse Verse 14, we are reminded as, as Moses is uh, telling Israel's history, we're reminded that Israel had 30 years earlier passed through this area, and yet now all the generation of the men of war that came out of Egypt, 20 years and older, they are all dead, even as the Lord had sworn they would. Now, with that generation being dead, it was time to rise up, Deuteronomy 2, 15 through 16, rise up and take possession of their inheritance. Well, like the Moabites, uh, we've already seen with uh, uh, the Edomites, now we come to the Ammonites, verses 19 through 23. These are all ancient civilizations. Their descendants today live in the area uh, known as the uh, Desert of Arabia. Uh, and so now the Ammonites were also descendants of through Lot's lineage, Israel was not to disturb them. Now, notice with me then, Deuteronomy 2, verses 24 through 36. Here we have nations Israel was to conquer. Now, unlike the Edomites, the Moabites, and the Ammonites, the Lord had determined that the Amorites, whose king was Sihon, should be destroyed. And so we read in verses 24 through 36, In the providence of God, Moses sent messengers, and he offered peace to the Amorites, but they were denied. The Lord, therefore, we read in verses 30 through 31, Use King Sihon's refusal, hardened that king's spirit, made his heart obstinate that he might deliver the land of the Amorites to Israel. In other words, give them the land. Now, again, we might remember there was another king, Pharaoh, whose heart the Lord hardened again for his own purpose to give liberty to Israel to leave Egypt. You see, God uses the bent of men's hearts to accomplish his 
purpose. Does it mean that the heart of man is perfect? In fact, indeed, it's deceitful and desperately wicked. Now, Moses then recalls, as he's telling this story in Deuteronomy 2 and verse 32, that King Sihon came against Israel. But we read in verse 33 that the Lord our God delivered him before us. We smote him, his sons, and all his people. Not one of the Amorite cities in verse 34 were spared, and all the people were slain. Why is that? Because Israel would be taking possession not only of that land, but also it was to protect the hinder or the hinder part of Israel as they crossed over into the promised land. Well, I have a closing thought for you today. And it is that we are reminded as we're studying these first chapters of Deuteronomy that a nation's history is essential and should be taught and passed on to its children and their children children. History, after all, is more than just the legacy of a man or mankind. It is the record of the sovereignty and the providences of God. And so my challenge to you is let us be faithful to read God's preserved history recorded in his word and also be mindful that God is gracious. He will lead and guide when we are willing to follow his path. And then I close with the verse again being a reminder, Deuteronomy 2 verse 15, it is a dreadful thing when the hand of the Lord is against a nation, a people, and a man. If you wonder what is wrong with the world and why so many nations seem to be on the brink of self-destruction, you need only look at the fact that they have disavowed, they have rejected God's commandments. As a result, we are reaping his judgment. Well, I invite you to go to heartofashepherd.com and there you'll find today four uh, questions that will invite you to dig a little deeper as you study God's word with me. The Lord bless you. Have a great day and bye-bye.